one more group to hit. Group B, one more juggernaut left on the table. Wednesday, 12.45 p.m. Eastern. Leon hosting St. Poulton. I gotta say, if you're, you know, Leon staff and squad, you gotta be like, I mean, okay. Like, yeah, Barcelona's really good. They won the last Champions League. We won the one before that. They won 5 0. We won 9 mm-hmm. 0. Like, is anybody going to give it? Like, where's our credit? We're a flying death machine, too. Leon just dominated Slavia Praha from kickoff, from the very jump, from walking out of the tunnel. Leon looked completely unbeatable. Mm-hmm. The first goal <laughs> was like within the first three minutes of the match. It was about as easy of a four pass sequence as you could put together in a game of FIFA. It felt like a minor miracle that the match was still only 1-0 after the 10th minute. And that's when Leon they just kicked the floodgates completely open. Crazy. I talked about Barcelona's super impressive 5-0 victory. Well, Leon went up 5-0 before the match clock struck 24 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So take that. And it was against the Slavia Praha side that after 10 matches domestically, is 10-0-0 with 48 <laughs> goals for and one goal against. Uh, and a side that won their round of 24 matchup, 11 goals to zero in aggregate against Olympia Cluj, who are champions of Romania. So, uh, you know, no slouch of a team. And Lyon just annihilated them. I mean, just ended the game, you know, before we were a third of the way through. 100%. I won't belabor it too much, but Lyon had 70% of the ball. They had 28 shots. 15 of those shots were on target. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, So more than 50% of their shots, uh, their massive amount of shots were on target. And I do just think it is fucking hilarious. Uh, Leon, as you might guess, they won the XG battle. But their XG, they had 5.1 XG to Praha's uh, two-tenths of a percent XG. I just love that they scored nine goddamn goals and they had an XG of (laughs) 5.1. I won't pretend like I totally understand XG, but I just know that Leon has players that... They'll score from an opportunity where you might not expect to score. That kind of bears out in those numbers. I mean, the skill, like you talk about Barcelona, I think this is kind of where they are even, where you are close to even, is you just look at the skill set of individual players and you're like, this player's got to be world class. And it's like, it's like the sports radio thing where everybody has a top 10. Everybody says players are top 10, but there are 19 players that they name who are in the top 10. I don't know how to say each of these players are world class when we're looking at a group of like 22 players and like 17 of them feel like they should be world class. Well, it could just be that these squads are that loaded. You know, when you look at like Van de Donk and Le Sommer and, you know, they signed Diani from PSG and like they just, everywhere you look, they've got somebody super dangerous that's doing something, you know, it's not even that's going to break the game open. Like the game has already been broken open and everybody's just <laughs> flooding through the door. Yeah. Um, 100%. This matchup with St. Poulton, we used to like to do over-unders in, in, a, in a past life. Mm-hmm. And I kind of feel like you've got to put Lyon's over-under with regard to group stage wins at like five and a half. Oh, you know? yeah. Like you kind of expect them to, to breeze through this entire group. I don't really expect anything different Wednesday, 12.45 p.m. So St. Poulton, they took on Braun. Any takeaways from that that one? I thought it was a good, I thought it was a good football match. I, I enjoyed it. I think, mm-hmm. you know, St. Poulton, they had their they had their hands full with SK Braun, who I think is a, is a good team. You know, it's hard to tell, like, as we're kind of ramping ourselves up and watching these teams, some of which for the first time, like, try to do the research, watch old matches, but Braun plays with good physicality. I believe uh, her name is uh, is Gausset, the attacking player for Braun, who absolutely trucked a defender before dribbling to the end line and then hitting a perfect pass to uh, Raquel Engsvik for Braun's opening goal in that match. And it was just like, okay, they're going to come out here and they're going to, to use another sports cliche, impose their physical will. They were, <laughs> But they weren't just a bunch of brutes out there. Like They had great foot skills and were able to pass the ball neatly and tidily while also just bodying up on their opponents. Yeah, real quick on, on Sinja Gapsa. I mean, she was terrorizing St. Poulton from the jump physically, yeah. for sure. Was very surprised to learn she's 18 and a half years old. What the Crazy fuck man. are they feeding these, these kids in Norway? I mean, definite Zion vibes from her. Mm-hmm. I mean, she was she was really impressive, not just physicality, but skill wise, too, and intensity, like a great trio of assets to bring to a match like this. hundred percent. I mean, Norway, they're coming up in the men's game, but they are a traditional women's footballing power. It'll be exciting to see how kind of how they play. But getting back to Polton, I really liked Schluter, their keeper. 
she was fucking great. She kept them in yep. the match, like, throughout the whole series of shots that are getting fired at her. She had some really creative saves. She was able to use her legs for a couple to, like, really desperately make some needed stops. I always like a keeper that is able to hold the ball Like when you have an attacker running at you and you're not afraid to make the catch and you trust yourself to not punch it over the bar or just punch it away, you know, you're like, I got the hands. Let me just grab this and just lay down on it. I I always think that's a savvy play. And I I thought Schluter was outstanding. Yeah. And she quickly wanted to play the ball ahead. Yes. When there was an opportunity. Definitely set the tone, turning defense into offense. Uh, for St. Paul, and so she she definitely had herself a game. And also a sick strike from Maria Mikolajova, who in a match day one of, of sick goals, she had an awesome one. Yeah, totally. Mikolajova, that was an absolute laser. I love the ones that catch everybody's surprise, the goals uh, that catch the announcer by surprise, too, where she hits it, and everyone's like, oh! Like, Whoa. Like, yeah, like, you just <laughs> do not expect that to happen. It ricochets off the post and goes in. Just a beautiful hit by her. And, you know, the young players over on Poulton, 23-year-old German international Rita Schumacher, who set up that goal by Mikola Jova, you know, she almost had an equalizer at the end herself. So I'm going to be interested to see. I thought Schumacher, when she came into the match, I thought she made a real difference. I will be interested to see, is she a super sub type player or are they going to give her more minutes? They might want to ramp up on the scoring threat uh, as they progress through this group. This group's going to be interesting. I mean, I think on first glance, it feels like Braun is maybe in the driver's seat to, to get to the quarters, but mm. still so much football to be played. And it feels like there's a good amount of parity between these other three teams that are not Lyon. There's definitely time to get your form back on track, learn some stuff, make some adjustments. It's still early enough where that second spot is definitely up for grab. So I don't think we're going to have the same level of drama with some of the other groups. Yeah. But I think this one's going to go probably all the way out to the sixth match day until we know for sure who's going to grab that second spot. So definitely good reasons to tune in. Yeah, that's a good call. And speaking of those Group D matches, so next, obviously, we, we talked a little bit about Braun here. Braun versus Slavia Praha. I feel like Praha gets to come out here and be like, okay, so that went poorly in the first match. That like, <laughs> We understand that. But like these are the matches that we're going to be really competitive in. And I think it's just going to be hard to judge Praha until we see them play these other teams. But again, going back to what I like about Braun, you have Mikkelsen in goal, uh, Engzevic, Krummer, and Gopset up front. That's a dangerous trio up front. I like the way that they they attacked in their last match. And I think it's just like, I'm looking at this as, let's get some more intel. Let's kind of figure out, okay, Praha didn't have a prayer against the Flying Death Machine. What can they get going? I'm really eager to see how Praha stacks up against Braun. And then we can kind of do the college football transitive property. Okay, well, now how are they going to look against Poulton? And maybe help us kind of figure out, uh, or at least help us reassess who who's in the driver's seat for second in the group. Yeah, and I think there's so many more head-to-heads to still be played. And I think you nailed it. I think you might have texted this to me at some point during the week that um, the Praha goalkeeper, you know, wasn't wasn't mentally... I mean, it's got to be tough. You give up five. Yeah. You, you don't give up five. Your side gives up five in 24 minutes. <laughs> right. That's going to wreck anybody's confidence. Clean slate, fresh start. It'll be interesting to see how these teams bounce back which teams find their footing, and who grabs that second spot, like we mentioned. I will tell you, depending on how this match turns out between Braun and Praha, there might be an opportunity for us to put a little double circle around Braun playing Lyon in France on December 13th. If Braun looks good Mm -hmm. again, then maybe they can go in there and not be scared and keep it close. We could also see another 4-0 type victory for Lyon. I don't know. I don't know how how anybody's going to stop them, but if Braun's in there playing with confidence and playing physically, they might be able to 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 do something amazing. I think what we've well, I don't want to say we I don't want to speak for you, but I think what I learned after the first match week is the key to staying competitive and essentially surviving this late to the tournament. We talked last week about how 70 teams get down to 16. You know, that's already a gauntlet to get to here. It's through physicality. Yep. Whether it's like Roma's intensity, they were just on 11. Ajax, you know, they suffocated PSG. I mean, PSG, you know, like oh, we talked about the mixtape vibes from them, but the ball gets somewhere and they they get somewhere. Like just yep. immediately thereafter, they're trying to win balls immediately all over the field. And then you look at a side like Braun, who physically is not only beating you up, but also playing fast. 
So it's like, we're going to beat you up, yeah. we're going to take the ball, and we're going to play fast, we're going to try some shit. And I think that has to be the way that you go at some of these teams. And, you know, maybe sometimes you're Benfica and you get smacked right back by Barcelona. But other times I think we might see that type of play really bear fruit like we did with Ajax and PSG. Yeah, totally right. Like the physicality takes a toll. You make your opponent who who might feel or very clearly has a huge advantage in terms of skilled players or world-class players. But if you get them frustrated, if you get them kind of acting out of character or trying to make rash decisions on their end, maybe you sneak in a counterattack goal and then it's a whole new fucking ball game. I, I think we say it all the time in almost every sport that we talk about. Every game is like its own ecosystem of random bounces and chance occurrences. When you're playing as an underdog, if you can increase that little bit of randomness or that little bit of kind of unexpected happenings, then you're giving yourself a better chance. One last quick point. Watching Lyon play, I just couldn't understand how France didn't play better in the World Cup. And I think that's that's perfectly correlated to what you mentioned, where it's like you could have a lot of skill, tactically a good understanding of what you want to do. But once you get out there and weird shit happens and your mind starts to go different places, that's kind of when we see things topple a little bit and um, some of the unpredictable events that I think we love as sports fans. For sure. If I could just 30 second sidebar on this. I'm watching that match, the Lyon match. And I think your point about France is, is perfect leads me right into this is I believe that Lindsay Horan is the best American player alive right now. Mm -hmm. At worst, she's two. Pound for pound, is she the third best player on Lyon? Is she the fourth best player on Lyon? Like, if we're talking about Wendy Renard, Caridatu Diani, and Eugenie Lesamere, I don't know. Is Horan better than two of those players? Is she better than all? I don't think she's better than all three. I think pound for pound, I think Renard is one of the greatest players who ever lived. I don't know, man. I mean, yeah. that's just how fucking stacked they are. And I think Danielle Vandedonk, too, is probably <laughs> somewhere lingering there. Yeah. Uh, because in, in the USA match, she just stared us down. Like, she's like, no fucks. I don't give a shit who you guys are. Like, she has yeah, <laughs> yeah. zero fucks whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. And she gets she gets a goal in that one, too. So, thankfully, we get to watch all of them play together and just, like, the whole melting pot of world football. That's what makes, you know, this tournament so awesome. Anything else you want to hit before we get out of here? I guess I would just be remiss. We named all those great players for, for Lyon. We like to do this exercise for Barcelona. Not once have we said Ada Hegeberg for Lyon. And I just want to think about the prospect. There, there were there were moments in that Lyon match where Diani is streaking down the right-hand side. And I'm just like, okay, so you have Haran, you have... Renard, if, if the play breaks the right way, you have Le Samer, and then you have Ada Hegeberg all waiting for Diani to play an absolutely perfect cross in there. And then Van de Donk is back there. She's a little more diminutive, but she's hanging back to get the rebound so she could hit a perfect one-timer if needed. I don't know what you do against all that. I mean, I can't wait till we get to the quarters and semi. Like, I'm just, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm amped. I mean, just, just to see something. I hope we get some of these dream matchups. This tournament's going to be such a banger. Hell yeah. It's kind of nice to see the stacked teams with the superstars, I don't want to say lose, but get reminded that they need to bring it as well. Whether it's like PSG or Bayern Munich or Paris FC, like you mentioned, like, yep. you know, they probably came in like, all right, well, we've, we've, we've taken care of business against bigger teams than this. And it's like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> like, you need to show up and, and fucking be ready. So these are all great signals for the future of the game. And I'm just kind of really excited, again, to be going on this ride with you, man. I think it's going to be a great tournament. And we're only one match in, so a lot more football to cover, a lot more football to watch. Very exciting stuff. That is the funny thing is that we've watched match day one, and it's like this entire universe of things that have happened. And so we, we get, <laughs> we get yeah. five more matches in each group. So as a guy who likes the NFL but has kind of like watched less and less NFL over over the years I am excited for uh, this Thanksgiving hopefully it becomes a Thanksgiving tradition where I get to watch some good European Champions League football on my Thanksgiving so I'm just super psyched for it I love it all right man I think we did it this has been another episode of into the channel thank you for rocking with us UEFA Women's Champions League match day two coming up this week all the matches going down Wednesday and Thursday. So be sure to lock into that. Be sure to subscribe to Into the Channel, Spotify, YouTube. Follow us on Twitter, ITC underscore pod. And as we continue to expand our footprint, we'll let you know where you're going to be able to find us. But in the meantime, definitely hit that subscribe button on YouTube and Spotify. And we will be back after match day two to have some more coverage and some more look aheads for the future of what we can expect in the rest of the group stage. Hell yeah, man. I appreciate it. And uh, enjoy the holiday weekend and enjoy the football.
to you as well, my good man. Great talking football with you. All right, dude. Talk to you later.